ladies and gentlemen. Good day and welcome to the Glenmark Life Sciences Q2 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Shomi Rao, General Manager, Corporate Communications. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to the earnings conference call of Glenmark Life Sciences Limited for the quarter ended September 30th, 2023. From Glenmark Life Sciences, we have with us Dr. Yasri Raoji, our MD and CEO, and Mr. Tushal Mistri, our CFO. Our board has approved the results for the quarter ended September 30th, 2023. We have released the same to the stock exchanges and updated it on our website. Please note that the recording of the transcript of this call will be available on the website of the company. Now I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that some of the information shared as part of this call, especially information with respect to our plans and strategies, may contain certain forward-looking statements that involve risks and uncertainties. These statements are based on current expectations, forecasts, and assumptions that are subject to risks which could cause actual results to differ materially from these statements, depending upon, depending upon our economic conditions, government policies, and other incidental factors. Such statements should not be regarded by recipients as a substitute of their own judgment. The company undertakes no obligation to update or revise any forward-looking statement, whether as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise. Our actual results may differ materially from those expressed in or implied by these forward-looking statements. With that, I invite Dr. Yasser Raoji to say a few words. Thank you, and over to you, Doctor. Uh, Shami, thank you. Uh, good evening and welcome, everyone, to our uh, Q2 earnings call. Before I get into the discussion of GLS performance, uh, let's just take a couple of minutes to discuss the economy and industry trends that are likely to have a direct or indirect impact on the business. The economic landscape remains a little uncertain with the Chinese economy slowing down, uh, which does have uh, impact on the chemicals industry. Uh, plus, the, the inflation uh, across the globe continues to challenge economic stability in various parts of the world. Uh, the geopolitical uh, situation also could have some impact on oil prices, and so that could have some impact on our business. But we've seen the worst. Okay. Uh, so overall, if you look at the economic and geopolitical landscape, there are a few moving parts that uh, will impact our business, can impact our business, but largely, you know, things uh, should be okay for our industry. Uh, on, so coming to the industry itself, the, the demand landscape is very promising at present. Okay, demand has been strong for us across various regions, uh, with the U.S. experiencing a surge in demand on the back of uh, st a stabilized pricing environment. Europe and LATAM also continue to showcase uh, sustained momentum along with our India DMF uh, business. The supply dynamics also show encouraging signs marked by enhanced stability in supply chain and oversupply from China on chemicals, resulting in better commodity and intermediate prices. So it reflects a resilient and positive pharmaceutical um, environment, uh, you know, positive environment for our industry. That said, we need to stay vigilant and adaptive to uh, potential ramifications of the ongoing geopolitical and economic turbulence uh, in the coming quarters. As far as GLS's performance goes, uh, we are pleased to share that we achieved sales of 595 crores uh, during second quarter, continuing the growth trajectory with close to 17% growth. Growth has been driven uh, by a 20% growth in our generic API business, which to some extent was offset by a temporary dip in the CDMO revenue. The generic API business was driven by both uh, the Glenmark Pharma business, um, which grew close to 50% YOY, as well as consistent upward momentum in the external business. It is crucial to highlight that the dip in the CDMO business in Q2 was temporary, and we, are, we expect demand to pick up in the second half of the current financial year. If you look at our regional distribution, except for slight degrowth in Japan and ROW, all markets have performed exceedingly well. 
on the product pipeline, we have added three new products to our pipeline with one high potent API and two complex APIs. Coming to the high potent API pipeline, we now have 12 products with a total addressable market of $21 billion at the front end. And three products have been validated so far. Now, uh, before I conclude, uh, it is important to address the Glenmark Pharma's recent decision to divest uh, its majority stake in Glenmark Life Sciences. Glenmark Pharma will be divesting 75% stake in Glenmark Life Sciences to Midma Limited. This transaction, we believe, is the beginning of a new chapter for GLS as Nirma becomes, as Nirma Limited becomes the principal promoter of the company. We believe this, this strategic move is poised to accelerate growth and will help create more value for our stakeholders in the long term. I would like to highlight that we will continue to operate as an independent API company and our core mission remains, even with the change in ownership. Strategy-wise, nothing, nothing changes on the business front for the short term, but I would surely like to mention that there will be focus on additional growth levers going forward. Therefore, I see this event as an opportunity to further strengthen our position in the API industry and continue the strong growth trajectory with healthy margins. The transaction, of course, is subject to necessary regulatory approvals. More insights will have to wait for strategic direction to be finalized with the new promoter once the transaction is completed. I urge for your patience till such time. However, I would like to highlight that it is vital to underscore that the core strategy of GLS will remain intact with any new strategy developed being only incremental to our core approach. Looking ahead, we have good visibility for the second half on the generics API side as well as CDMO, which gives us the confidence of delivering strong growth in the latter half of the financial year as well. This will translate into a strong FI24 for us, provided the external environment remains conducive. So with that, uh, I now invite our CFO, Tushar Mistri, to discuss the financial performance for the quarter. Thank you, Dr. Yasser. Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Q2 FI24 earnings call. I would like to briefly touch upon the key performance highlights for the quarter and half year ended 30th September 2023, and then we will open the floor for questions and answers. We had a good growth this quarter with revenue from operations at 595 crores, a growth of 16.9% year on year, and 2.9% on sequential basis. As Dr. Yasser mentioned, the growth was driven by strong uptick in general KPI business. The gross profit for the quarter was at 322 crores at 19.7% year-on-year growth. Gross margin for the quarter was at 54.1%, which expanded 120 basis points year-on-year. Sequentially, gross margin looks low, but uh, please understand, Q1 was a quarter where all of them fired well for us. The beta for the quarter was at 172 crores, up 12.3% year-on-year. The beta margin for the quarter was at 29%, driven by better gross margin and higher employee expenses. Gross margin was driven by product mix, whereas higher employee expenses was driven by regular incremental cycles, increment cycles, and certain talent management costs which is expected to continue at similar levels in the near term. However, it is important to note that we continue to have one of the lowest employee cost to revenue ratios in the industry. Depreciation and amortization is in line with capital expense done last year. The PAC for the quarter stood at 118 crores, a growth of 10.6% year on year, with PAC margins coming at 19.9%. Let me quickly discuss half yearly numbers. Revenue from operations for half first half was at 1174 crores, a growth of 70.5% year on year. Gross profit for H1 FI24 was at 53 crores, up 23.1% year on year. Gross profit margin for H1 FI24 expanded by 250 basis points uh, year on year to 55.6%. percent The beta was at 367 crores, up 18.6%, with EBITDA margins remaining steady at 31.3%. PAC for H1 was at 255 crores, up 17.7%. Moving on to the, uh, to the segmental performance for Q2 FI24, general KPI revenues grew by almost 20% to rupees 543 crores, driven by strong growth in GPL business, coupled with sustained growth in external business. CDMO business revenue was subdued at rupees 25.3 crores, driven by low demand for one of the products. However, as Dr. Yasser mentioned, this was temporary and we would have, uh, we have good demand visibility for second half of FI24. Looking at the therapeutic mix, CVS and CNS continued to lead the growth during the quarter with both therapies contributing 60% to the top line. R&D expenditure for the quarter was at 37 crores, which was 3.1% of our sales. 
touching upon the balance sheet and cash flow movement, starting with working capital, working capital remains stable during H1, FY24 at 170 days. Uh, and all the working capital uh, components uh, remain stable for, uh, for the first half. Coming to capital expenditure, CapEx for H1 was uh, at 63 crores. I would also like to share an important update on Solabro CapEx. The engineering work has started for construction of phase one of uh, 200 KL in Solapur. We continue to remain a net debt free company and I'm happy to inform you that we have generated strong cash flow from operations of rupees 216 crores in first half with cash and cash equivalents of rupees 443 crores on the books as of 30th September 2023. To conclude, a strong demand scenario coupled with better visibility depot makes us confident of delivering growth, strong growth in FY24. With that, let us open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one if you wish to ask a question. We have the first question from the line of Nitesh Dutt from Burman Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. I have a question on our parent business. Can you give some color on how that business will evolve if there are any long-term contracts, or whether the business uh, will taper down in future? Uh, any perspective on that? So parent business uh, will continue. Of course, uh, we have been operating at an arm's length. So in that sense, nothing changes, right? We, uh, but it's a significant business. There is an uh, agreement that uh, this business will continue for a period of five years. Okay, and uh, just like Glenmark Pharma is an important customer for us, uh, Glenmark Life Sciences is also an important supplier. To Glenmark Pharma, we supply more than 65 APIs uh, to Glenmark Pharma. So um, we expect that this business will be robust and will continue. Of course, we had guided in the past that with the sort of divergent strategies of Glenmark Pharma and Glenmark Life Sciences, uh, we expect the overall contribution to our business from Glenmark Pharma to come down uh, over a period of time but we will continue to be an important supplier to them. Correct. And so can you uh, share some details around this five-year agreement? Is it uh, sort of a uh, uh, guaranteed offtake kind of agreement or is any kind of growth embedded in that? Yeah, so like I said, right, our, our business with Denmark Pharma has been an arm's length business. We, of course, need to be competitive. Right, and so far we have been competitive and have retained a significant business. Also, you need to realize that most of the business that we are doing with Denmark Pharma, over 95% of the business is a regulated market business, right? So with the number of approvals that we have over multiple markets, right, uh, this is a fairly sticky business and will continue. Call it, thanks. I'll get back in touch. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Charul Agra, Bank of America. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, could you help us understand uh, how the CDMO business will move from here? You, you have mentioned a few projects that will pick up from two years. So could you share updates on updates and those? Okay, so see, CDMO has been a, a little bit uh, lumpy, right? Uh, in the past, you've seen this as well. Uh, the good news for us on CDMO is that uh, the current projects are on track. Uh, 
uh, is, you know, on account of, you know, slow demand on one of the uh, projects, right, one of the commercial projects we saw this quarter, uh, a dip in this quarter, but uh, overall this business will continue. The other, the other thing on the CDMO business is we've had a lot of traction from uh, new customers on new projects which we are currently qualified, you know, where the, you know, our API is being currently qualified. So uh, the the outlook on the CDMO business for us is going to be pretty strong uh, going forward, right? In about a year's time, we should see at least another two to three projects added to the basket. So thank you for this. Uh, Sir, uh, could you also help us understand if uh, among the new capacity that is uh, that is planned, uh, the brownfield capacity, is there some capacity that will be devoted towards CDMO? And if so, uh, how much would it be for CDMO? So as far as capacity goes, uh, it's an overall capacity build. So uh, if you recall, in Ankleshwar, we had taken up this one uh, large block of 400 KL of which 192 KL uh, came online in Q4 of last year. And uh, this, uh, you know, in, by this Q4, we will have another 208 KL built out. So that's, uh, that's going to be significant. Now, this will be both for the generic as well as the CDMO business. So we don't have dedicated capacities for CDMO. So far, none of our CDMO customers have asked for dedicated capacity. It's only one project one com one current commercial project that has a dedicated capacity and that is by virtue of the technology that is in use for that project so uh, overall for our cdmo projects we don't have dedicated capacity thank you for this sir so one last question for me uh Tushar, if you could help us understand what would be the capex guidance uh, uh, what will be the capex guidance, and uh, when would the opex come for uh, for the ancillary plant? Has it already come in, or is it supposed to come from next quarter? Uh, so, Charul, uh, we have been guiding to 150 to 200 crores of uh, capex in the current year. Will be more towards the 200 crores of uh, capex in the current year. Is how we are looking at uh, capex for the current year. Thank you, Shar. And regarding the OPEX, is it already there for the unconventional plant or will it come over from the next quarter? So we have uh, expansions happening in Ankleshwar, also in the Hedge, and also a bit of Solapur that I explained in my opening remarks. So we are starting on Solapur as well now. Some part of that is uh, dedicated towards that as well. Charul, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Uh, Charul, you are not audible at the moment if you are speaking. Yes, that answers my question. Sorry, I wasn't mute. All right. Thank you. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Sumit Gupta from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, sir. Uh, so I have two questions. First is regarding the employee expenses. So there has been a like nearly 300 dips jump in the employee expenses uh, as percentage of sales. And why is this so? And what is the trend do you see going forward? And second question is on the line of the like a beta margin so in 2q on like there's one trend that q 2q in general is moderate with respect to other quarters so why is that so thank you actually the answer for both is uh, the employee cost itself so uh, your question on employee cost uh, as i again mentioned in my opening remarks there are certain talent management costs there are certain uh, expenses that we have incurred on uh, on uh, bonuses to some employees, which will uh, uh, have impact in the which has impact in the current quarter as well as will continue to have some impact in the near term, uh, and that's what we are seeing uh, for the current year. The impact will remain, and that also answers your EBITDA margin uh, uh, question. 
where the margin has come to 29 percent compared to around 31 percent in the past. Okay, so this trend would uh, like uh, like continue in 24 and 25. This 28, 29 percent a bit down. This is for the current year that I'm seeing, not for the. Uh, we'll see for the next year. We'll guide as we come closer to that time. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. To ask a question, ladies and gentlemen, you may please press star one. The next question is from the line of Bala Murali Krishna from Oman Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Uh, regarding EDMO business, uh, one project uh, is getting delayed uh, because of some regulatory approvals uh, since last few quarters. Uh, could you please update on that? Uh, what is the status on this project? Yeah, so see, from us, from GLS's perspective, API has been supplied. Okay, and the customer has taken validation batches already at their end. But uh, they are looking to enter 50 plus markets here, right? So from a regulatory perspective, they are, you know, they, they are aligning all their, their, you know, their regulatory filings. And as a result of which uh, there have been delays, but uh, it is on track, it is going well. Okay, so we do expect it to come uh, hopefully by the end of this year. Okay. But like I said uh, earlier to Charu's question, is that we have added, uh, you know, we are actively pursuing other CDMO projects which uh, are moving much faster. And uh, uh, in about a year's time, we should see another two to three projects added to our pipeline. Currently, our entire CDMO business is driven by three commercial projects. So another two or three will make a significant uh, impact on our CDMO revenue. Yeah, oh, that's fine. And uh, regarding this uh, margins, uh, so when this, uh, uh, for I mean, come upcoming four or five years, uh, when uh, GPL uh, is supposed to supply to GPL, so is there any possibility to get some impact on the margins? Uh, or uh, we can maintain that same uh, 30% kind of margin for them maybe two, about uh, two, three four years down the line? Yeah, so again, right, uh, the GPL business is an arm's length business, right? We continue to remain competitive. Uh, you know, on that business and uh, the margin profile is an overall, you know, uh, it's a function of our mix, right? And considering that we've got a, a fairly large number of launch molecules coming up, uh, right? We ex uh, plus CDMO business growing relatively, we expect that the margin profile will at least stay, uh, you know, uh, in the in the same region. Okay. Uh, and regarding this, uh, uh, the coming 200k LPD capacity addition in this uh, H2, so we can see some incremental revenues from this, or uh, uh, it's uh, like uh, in-house convention, it will be catered to in-house No, we we have planned part of it for backward integration and part of it for, uh, you know, intermediate. So uh, the demand is high, right, uh, for both... Uh, segment by the BI as well as the intermediate. So we expect that, you know, it will it'll have a fairly uh, quick uptake on utilization. The new the new capacity that will come online by Q4. Okay, that's right. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. To ask a question, participants, you may please press star one on your touchstone phones. The next question is from the line of S. Mukherjee from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so I wanted to understand, uh, you know, this uh, agreement with uh, Denmark. So you have an agreement for five years for offtake. Are there any other clauses like non-compete clause? Can Denmark, uh, you know, produce some of the APIs for its in-house consumption? And also on pricing, what kind of uh, you know protection we have in the game? Yeah, so uh, uh, so this is uh, the non-compete is there uh, for both uh, Glenmark Pharma as well as for uh, uh, Nirma as well. So Glenmark Pharma will have to uh, restrict from uh, doing the APIs that Glenmark Life Sciences is doing. Uh, and so will Nirvana have to avoid uh, doing any formulations that uh, 
Glenmark Pharma is doing using Glenmark Life Science uh, APIs. Okay. So, uh, for uh, let's say future pipeline projects of Glenmark, uh, Glenmark can develop its own APIs uh, for its internal use. I mean, is it restricted to the basket that Glenmark Life Sciences is currently catering to? Or even for let's say, future baskets, uh, future products you know, over the next five years, is there a restriction there as well? The uh, uh, pipeline products can be done by Glenmark Life Sciences or by Glenmark Pharma, depending upon how the arrangement goes, but there is no uh, restriction there. I just like to clarify on the pipeline, right? Glenmark Pharma has already qualified quite a few GLS APIs, so that will come under the the agreement but anything new right that they want to develop right that uh, they can go ahead and develop because i had explained in one of my earlier calls that there is a divergence in the portfolio approach uh, of gls and gpl right and so if we are not going to develop certain api uh, for our own reasons uh, driven by our business uh, right they are free to go ahead and Develop those APIs because it doesn't anywhere fit in our uh, you know bucket. Okay. And sir, uh, secondly, uh, have you sort of shared any guidance? Share what? Could you please repeat? Your question was not clear. Yeah, sorry, sir. I was asking uh, a bit of margin guidance uh, for this year and for FI twenty five. So we uh, stick to our guidance that we have been giving in the past uh, for a long term, from a long term perspective, that uh, both on the revenue as well as on EBITDA, revenues will be within the mid team range, and uh, the EBITDA margins will be around 30 uh, percent kind of range over a long term period. Okay, and this you think uh, you know you'll have 30 percent even this year, uh, FI 24. This year, as I mentioned, there are certain. Uh, uh, Employee related expenses also coming in, which right. uh, will have some temporary impact. But uh, other than that, uh, uh, we will remain within that range. Okay. So, so this quarter's uh, EBITDA margin is representative of what we should expect for the full FI24. Will that be right? You, you can assume that, I would say. Okay. And then finally, uh, more strategic question in terms of. Uh, you know, I don't know, I mean, at this point, how much you can share, but uh, this with, uh, with within the Nirma. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Mukherjee, the line for you is uh, unclear at the moment. If you could please repeat your question. Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, this is better. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I was asking uh, from a strategic perspective, uh, what, you know, under the Nirma group, uh, what all, uh, you know, uh, you think you can do uh, which were possibly you couldn't have pursued under uh, you know within within the Glenmark uh, framework. So if you can if you can elaborate that, is it the CDMO piece you know coming out of the out of a generic company or anything like that? If you can you know elaborate strategically how things change uh, for life sciences now. So see from a strategic perspective, right? Uh, we we will stay on track with respect to the the strategy. Right. However, uh, once uh, the regulatory approvals come through and the transaction is closed, then uh, we would explore various options because you realize that the API space is extremely wide and there are a large number of opportunities that uh, for historical reasons we have not pursued. Okay. So very likely that once the regulatory approvals come through and you know uh, the transaction is concluded, we would be uh, sitting and sort of working out uh, the strategy with the new promoters, uh, you know, and so things will become, you know, better clarified once that happens. So I'd request that, uh, you know, uh, you give us some time before we come through on that. It's very difficult to speculate at this point, right, in terms of uh, what we will be doing, but I can say that uh, we expect to do more for sure. And so when you say more, uh, is it more on the CDMO side, you know, some uh, developing relationship with innovators, 
I mean, anything on that you know, color you can give, or or I mean, as at this point, you know, you know, is anything that Nirma brings to the table which can add? So that's what see CDMO and API are parts of our current strategy anyway, right? Uh, I mean, and we like I uh, uh, explained earlier, right? We've been getting significant traction on CDMO even now. Right, and given the fact that uh, you know it's a more sticky business, right? I mean, that's something we would definitely continue. What I'm referring to is things that you know in the past that we did not do, right? So these are the things that we would kind of explore with the uh, new promoters, right? To uh, see if we can expand in different directions. Like I said, too early to sort of put something on the table because. Uh, we really like to have this to be a joint, uh, you know, kind of have a clear understanding between us and the new promoter. So, you know, give us some time, and you know, we'll certainly come back. The, the key thing is that we first need to go through the regulatory approvals. Got it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may please press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Saad Sheikh from BOB Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. So uh, my question was uh, with regards to the PLI benefit we have recorded in the past for three quarters. So since we are being disassociated with the parent and they have the PLI uh, mandate, so how this benefit will be uh, going forward? Could you comment on that? Sorry, uh, you are saying the PLI benefit uh, going forward? Yes, after uh, NEMA takeover. Yeah, so uh, the uh, current understanding is that the PLI benefit will continue till uh, the time we are uh, a part of the GPL group. Beyond that timeline, we are still exploring what possibilities will be there and how it will uh, pan out. Uh, we don't have the clarity yet uh, on that. But uh, nevertheless, even if it has to be there, it's a, uh, it's a 100 to 150 basis points of uh, impact, which uh, we are sure we'll be able to uh, cover otherwise. Okay, thanks. Uh, and on uh, working capital, uh, is there any plans to improve from here onwards? No, I think uh, uh, the effort to keep on improving on that continues, but uh, as Dr. explained, the geopolitical uh, scenario currently is so volatile that uh, we don't want to uh, be very thin on the working capital. We rather would uh, invest some part in it and sit on some of the inventories rather than, you know, uh, do too much of correction there. Uh, and we are being cautious there. So uh, we have not increased the working capital from the levels that we saw in uh, March, we have uh, remained at that level, but uh, we don't expect it to take, go significantly high from here or anything that can significantly change from here. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may please press star and one on your touchstone phones. The next question is from the line of Charul Agrawal from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Thank you for the follow-up. Uh, I wanted to clarify regarding the edit the margin guidance for FY24. Yeah, Charul, go ahead. Uh, so I just give uh, that to Sayo that uh, the uh, Long-term margin remains to what we have been guiding in the past of uh, a beta margin in the in the range of around 30 percent, and that will remain. In the near term, it will uh, you will see some uh, dips happening in the current year uh, because of uh, the employee expenses that we saw. But otherwise, from an overall long-term perspective, it will it should remain in the range that we have been guiding. Uh, so, but for even for the current year, given that we are expecting CDMO to pick up uh, over the next quarter and employee costs were, were already elevated uh, this quarter, do we expect, uh, like, do we not expect margins to recover from this level? 
so again it's a matter of product mix and uh, cdmo playing out i mean cdmo is something that uh, we are expecting we'll see how that uh, plays out depending on that will uh, uh, so we are not saying that it may or may not have an impact on the uh, margin but it is all a matter of timing and cdmo is not something that we are uh, uh, you know absolutely certain that this will happen at this point of time it it's there's a lot of regulatory involvement there so it has to play out as per the timelines right so you had called out that you were in advance discussions with two other customers and for those who had uh, supplied validation batches and expected uh, it to commercialize in two weeks so is it uh, is it not uh, is it still very uncertain or uh, what is the outlook on those no charu it's not uncertain the reason we were able to so categorically put it on the table now is because we have already supplied validation quantity right and that's why i said in a year from now we would expect another two projects two to three projects to come in right uh, okay. let's realize that once we supply validation quantities there's a there's an approval cycle like tushar was explaining okay and so whether it you know when it impacts our numbers is something we would not be able to uh, say for certain uh, whether it hits us in whether it benefits us in q4 or you know whether it goes to q2 of next year is something that needs to be seen right so that's where uh, you know we can't be absolutely certain that uh, you know these two new projects that are likely to happen soon right will will kick in this year or uh, by next year that's that's the point thanks for that answers my question sure thank you participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Bala Murali Krishna from sorry, that's Naman Bansali from Perpetually Ventures LLP. Please go ahead. I say thank you for the opportunity. I just have one question with Nirma coming up on the board. Uh, how do you see the management board to change, or would there be, or would it be the total same board, or how would the roles change, if any? so uh, the management will continue uh, naman management there is no change in the management that uh, we see uh, obviously the uh, representation of denmark pharma on the board of uh, denmark life sciences will go down and there will be representations from nirma coming on board of uh, denmark life sciences uh, that is what we see as a change that is happening as far as the senior leadership team and uh, uh, the other members of the uh, denmark life sciences will continue as they are operating today there is no change in that okay got it and second question would be on the synergy so uh, you know nirma is a big technical business going on so do you see any other further synergies into uh, our business and secondly on one point you mentioned that you would be open to exploring other cdmo opportunities which you haven't done previously so are there any such opportunities which could be open opening up with the promote change uh, see naman from a long term growth strategy perspective we'll have to you know really wait for us to uh, interact with the new promoters and get the strategies in line with them uh, as of now our strategy that we have been talking about in the past whatever will come will come uh, on top of that so it will only be accurate to our uh, current strategy uh, but uh, we would really urge that we will have to wait till the time all the regulatory approvals and all are done and uh, then we are able to then interact with the uh, new promoters to give some strategic uh, 
uh, you know way forward on this good good and lastly just to point out the oncology and complex uh, business which we are getting into so when do you see the major pick up coming in in this particular segment of oncology so the onco has picked up really well like we explained last time we have nine uh, molecules already in onco in the pipeline okay three have been validated already okay and uh, we continue to see a good amount of traction in all of them of course they are at various stages in development uh, some uh, you know have uh, sort of immediate uptake in terms of validation others because they are newer apis right uh, are are currently being seeded with customers so they are in various stages of the development life cycle uh, but the good thing is that i think we made the right play at the right time with onco and uh, with our onco facility also coming up on in time we are able to validate uh you know the new the new apis in time to be able to uh, supply to customers commercial will will sort of take its time but uh, i mean some of them will happen pretty soon got it for addition and one last i think reason or it is the employee expectation so uh we we are seeing a 67 crore number this quarter and historically we have seen that q2 is the high number for us but it tapers down for the remaining quarters so are we expecting such a phenomena this year also or you think q4 would have such a base uh sorry i'm uh, you are again uh, talking about the employee cost point Yes, yes. Uh, I was saying that in Q2 generally we have seen it is a high number, but over the next second half of the year it generally tapers down a little bit from that date. So you will see a bit higher than what it has been in the normal uh, times in the past. So uh, you should expect some uh, uh, higher cost for the current year. Got it. And you mentioned some talent acquisitions going on in that space. So could you point out any specific ones? Sorry. you mentioned your opening commands that there are some talent acquisitions going on due to the central benefit no, no, no. i i mentioned not talent acquisition talent management i mentioned so it is okay. more to do with from management perspective not from an acquisition no new no further acquisition that we are looking at from a talent perspective okay got thank you that's it from okay thank you to ask a question ladies and gentlemen you are requested to please press star 1 The next question is from the line of Bala Murali Krishna from Oman Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, regarding the Syrian dealers, if we can commercialize the upcoming projects, uh, uh, what would be the peak revenue potential we can expect in the second quarter, twenty-five or twenty-six? Mr. Murali Krishna, you'll have to repeat. I I could not follow the question, please. Yeah, if if in the CDM of segment, if we can commercialize the upcoming two three projects which we are talking about in the upcoming year, so what could be the peak revenue potential we can expect in the twenty five from the CDM sector? So currently, we do about one fifty crores with three projects, right? Uh, the two yes. projects that I mentioned, plus the one that has been taking some time. So if we add another three projects, we would expect revenues of a similar nature. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Participants, you are requested to please press star one if you wish to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as our last question for today. On behalf of Glenmark Life Sciences, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect your